supracondylar fracture of the femur. The fracture line is just proximal to the femoral condyles. The distal fragment is pulled backwards by the pull of gastrocnemius muscle. The sharp edge of the fracture fragment can injure the popliteal artery. The fracture is often comminuted depending upon the severity of the force. Gastrocnemius popliteal artery. Pull of gastrocnemius angulates the distal fragment posteriorly and may cause injury to the popliteal vessels. Radiographic showing the fracture with posterior displacement of the distal fract fragment. Treatment. This fracture can be treated by conservative as well as operative methods. Conservative methods. The fracture is reduced under general anesthesia and the limb is immobilized in a Thomas splint. Skeletal traction is applied through the upper end of the tibia and the knee is maintained in 30 degrees of flexion using a Pearson knee attachment. The limb is immobilized for 8 to 12 weeks. Thomas splint, Pearson knee attachment. Fracture of distal femur, treatment by skeletal traction through upper tibial pin, Pearson knee attachment to the Thomas splint facilitates movement at the knee joint, which the patient can do himself. Operative methods, surgery is indicated in cases where close reduction fails or injury to the popliteal artery necessitates repair. The fracture is reduced by operation and fixed by condylar blade plate, a dynamic compression screw or an intramedullary supracondylar nail. Various other fixation devices are also available. Postoperative mobilization can be started after two weeks. However, weight bearing is started after about three months. Treatment by condylar angled blade plate line diagram as seen on a radiograph treatment by dynamic compression screw treatment by intramedullary supracondylar nail complications the complications include malunion nonunion and knee stiffness the treatment of these complication is the same as that for fracture of the shaft of the femur injury to the popliteal artery described earlier is a serious complication encountered in this fracture Repair of the artery or grafting is indicated urgently in such cases. The fracture is also fixed internally. Intercondylar fracture of the femur. It generally occurs as a result of severe trauma. Either single or both condyles may be fractured. When both condyles are fractured, the fracture line may pass through the condyles resulting in a T or Y-shaped fracture. Since it is an intra-articular fracture. It is usually associated with heme arthrosis. Intracondylar fracture of femur. Y-shaped fracture. T-shaped fracture. Treatment. It can be treated by conservative or operative methods. Conservative treatment. The plan of treatment is the same as for supracondylar fractures of the femur. Skeletal traction is applied through the upper tibia and is maintained for 6 to 8 weeks. Knee mobilization is started after 6 to 8 weeks. Operative treatment in all intra-articular fractures, accurate reduction of the fracture thereby achieving congruity of the articular surfaces is essential. Therefore, if the fracture is not too comminuted, open reduction and internal fixation of the fracture is indicated. Internal fixation is achieved by multiple screws, Kirchner wires or blade plate. Knee mobilization is started early that is after two weeks only. Complications 
injury to the popliteal nerve neurovascular bundle especially injury to the popliteal artery needs immediate repair post operatively there is a danger of infection to superficially placed implants this needs careful monitoring knee stiffness osteoarthritis in the knee joint and malunion are possible late complications physiotherapeutic management of supracondylar and intracondylar fractures of the femur the common problems with these injuries gross effusion of the knee knee stiffness due to ad adhesions and involvement of the articular surfaces knee instability the fracture especially a comminuted one may be associated with injuries to the soft tissues including ligaments unless the soft tissue repair and bone architecture are properly restored instability and stiffness of the knee are common features reflex inhibition of the quadriceps extensor lag due to quadriceps insufficiency right from the initial period it is absolutely essential to plan appropriate physiotherapeutic measures to control these four complications therapeutic measures are employed to minimize effusion and acquire early range of motion at the knee while maintaining reduction and emphasis on the early and strong isometrics to the quadriceps initially when the fracture is treated with skeletal traction the following program is instituted limb elevation pressure bandage and isometrics to the quadriceps and glutei are performed strong ankle and toe movements are given gradual knee mobilization is started after a week or 10 days it may be started as a relaxed passive movement preceded by thermotherapy or cryotherapy self controlled mobilization by continuous passive motion cpm is very effective early mobilization improves and maintains the tone and strength of the quadriceps besides facilitating gliding planes of quadriceps mechanism self assisted relaxed knee swinging with the patient sitting at the edge of the bed and supporting the operated leg by the good one is ideal technique of mobilization non weight bearing crutch walking should be initiated to make the patient ambulatory by 4 to 6 weeks comfortable arm of knee flexion beyond 90 degree should be attained with minimal effusion and full extension at the knee all programs should be made vigorous to gain further range and strength partial weight bearing is initiated by 9 weeks of following surgery and the patient is given proper reeducation in walking full weight bearing is permitted by 8 to 12 weeks proper gait training ambulation and functional training are initiated early knee mobilization and early weight bearing with cast brace has been reported by bogan and sprague 1975 for open or closed supracondylar intracondylar fractures cast brace with polycentric hinges is applied between 3 to 6 weeks standing and walking in parallel bars and knee movements are begun on the next day after applying the brace thank you subscribe for more content